morning, good morning, and good morning. Welcome to the Coffin Bible Hour Show. I'm your host, Brother Melvin, right here in Chicago, Illinois. Good morning, and reading for me today is also in the big windy city. We got Jerome Davis. Jerome Davis, welcome to the Coffee and Bible Hour Show. How you doing this morning? Wonderful. Grace and peace, everyone. All right. You're supposed to speak to me, too. <laughs> How you doing, speak to, speak to you. you don't speak to everyone. They don't say nothing to me. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Ain't this so? Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, my brothers and sisters that's tuning in. I see you coming in in the chat room, brothers and sisters. I'm glad to see you here. Hope, is, hope all is well with you and your family. I know some brothers and sisters not in the chat room, but I know you're there. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're having a good morning, a good blessed morning. You know, it's nothing like uh, 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 getting up with, with the Lord on your mind and knowing that the Lord going to do that business by watching over you. And, uh, and, and Jerome, the more I live and the more I watch the news, man, this is a time that you need the angel of the Lord to camp around you. They, everywhere they shooting in the shopping center, it's not safe. You go to the park, it's not safe. You go to the grocery store, it's not. Somebody shooting. And, man, you need God protection, man. If you don't know that, you know, <laughs> you need this, You need the Lord for he can have his angels, excuse me, to camp around you and protect you from this crazy, 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 world that we live in. So brothers and sisters, I, I just thank God for this day and and uh, 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 that we are here to deal with the word of God. It is truly a blessing to be up another day to deal with the Lord's word. Jerome Davis, tell yes. me this though, what are you reading from this morning? I got Psalms 93, one through five, and it reads, the Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The flood have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The
The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yeah, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Um, I will be reading from Psalms uh, 119 uh, at verse 1, because you know how long 119 is. Hmm. <clears throat> he said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed, I don't like to read them out on the screen. <laughs> Uh, uh, blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou have commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that thy ways were direct to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandment. I will praise thee with the uprightness of the heart, when I shall have learned thy righteousness judgment, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Praise ye the Lord. I always like to start the program all by giving the Lord to praise. He is truly deserving of the praise that we can that we give him. We, matter of fact, we can't give him enough praise. Just thanking God for another beautiful day. No. <clears throat> Knowing that it's going to be a good day. Why? Because I got the Lord on my side. You know, brothers and sisters, before we get started, let me, re let me, well, I didn't forgot to tell you guys, we on five days a week, Monday through Friday, 6.35 uh, a.m. Central Time and 7.35 a.m. Eastern Time and 4.35 a.m. Mountain Time. We are here to deal with the uncut word of God. We are having our early morning. Bible study, either early morning church by learning the word of God. That's what we're here for, you know. You know, let's get the, uh, let me remind you about my email. The email, my brothers and sisters. Uh, don't forget to put all your questions in the email because I cannot stop the show to, uh, to answer your questions. So, uh, if you're really concerned about what you you asked, then you'll put it in the email. See, a lot of people just be out there talking, talking, uh, uh, and, and they really don't want, they don't want no answer. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Jerome, they just be putting stuff out there, you know, a slick way of putting they they garbage doctrine on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna ask: Is is the Israelites is is the Israelite called Gentiles? You know, if it is, you should have scripture to it. So, <laughs> you know, but, you know, let's just make sure you be obedient and put to, put it in the email. I'm going to put it under the stream for, for the latecomers. Sometimes, you know, you know, people be tuning in a little late and they might not see that, but we going to be, uh, this, this is one of the obedient shows out here, uh, Jerome. Mm -hmm. You know, my my audience is very obedient. I know after saying that, I'm about to block somebody. Like that. <laughs> but what we gonna deal with today, man? Uh, like like we was talking before we came on, it's 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 so much stuff that's out on Facebook that inspires me to to put God's word on the table. Because if you ever want to go to the lake of fire. If you ever made up your mind, I, I want to go to the lake of fire, just listen to the people writing out there on Facebook and you and, and, and believe that stuff that they putting out there. Then you on your way to the lake of fire. You're successful. Got you a ticket to the lake of fire because it, it, it puzzled me. How you going to get out on Facebook and write like you got some sense? And you know you don't have no sense. Just look in the mirror. <laughs> You know, you didn't have no sense yesterday, and you don't have none today. So now you have to write like you got some sense, <laughs> but and not letting the letting the war let the word of the Lord be your guide. Yeah. So we're gonna deal with this today, uh, uh, Jerome, and and my listening audience. Uh, tied tied to God for your blessing, because uh, you know that you know it's a big thing. Everybody act like. 
dollar was doing something when he said he was wrong for collecting tithes is not biblical. I mean, everything we're going to read today, we're going to get it out of the Bible, you know. And um, and then the other thing, people think, well, when God got rid of the Leviticus priesthood, we don't have to tithe no more because the tithe was for the Leviticus priesthood. No, the tithe was for God. You just gave it to the Leviticus. Leviticus priesthood, mm -hmm. you know, and when, when the covenant changed, when I read, when God said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, <laughs> only something I've seen that he did, he said, I'm going to put my laws in your mind. So if the, if the tithing laws was there, where did he put them tithing laws at? He put them in your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know where, oh, he didn't get rid of the, uh, of the priesthood because I'm part of the priesthood, you know, so, so I just be wondering, what is you talking about? You know, you claim he got rid see, we under the new covenant, we don't have to pay no tithe. Read that to me. The only time I seen God change, like I say, he didn't, he took, he changed the law of you writing the, on your doorpost and with hammer hanging between your eyelids. And uh, 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 fringes and stuff. He got rid of that. And then with the priest, with the priesthood, you know, they don't want to, have to do all the work in the in the sanctuary. We still have the sanctuary, and somebody still got to do the work. But somehow along the way, you know, you don't have to pay no tithes no more. Like the preacher is supposed to come up with all the money. You know, you you said, Lord, and said, Lord got me uh, uh, putting this together, and then I supposed to come up with all the money, pay for the air condition, pay for the electricity, because you don't get that stuff free. So who's supposed to pay for it? Jerome, who you supposed, who you think supposed to pay for it? Yeah. <laughs> the people that's sitting there enjoying the air condition. Right. The people that's sitting in a, how many brothers and sisters would come to a, 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 a MAGA church and we ain't got no chairs? Y'all don't have no chill? No, y'all don't pay no tithes. <laughs> you know, we ain't got no chill. <laughs> say, now, if y'all want to pay tithes, I can go out and buy some. You know, I said, uh, uh, like I was telling Brother Boo, I said, but I guess you can't do it. I said, one day you just should show the, show the congregation just how much money you we spend in a month on vans, going out of town, airplane tickets, all this stuff to get the gospel out. But we supposed to pay for it out of our pocket, but we doing the work of the Lord. And you getting the benefits. Oh, I sure like the way he teach that word. Man, I'm 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 gonna lock in on this. But you don't wanna, you know, like 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 Paul said, told the Gentile, if you gonna if you gonna take part in our spiritual gifts. You should take part in our car gift, which he was saying you need to donate to the church. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do people get this stuff from? Let's just read the book, you know. But we don't deal with your tithes is for your blessing. You don't want to tithe, and then you want to know why you ain't blessed. You know, and then maybe you should start tithing. You know, I, I don't have no problem with tithe because guess what? <laughs> You know, I don't have no problem with giving because you know why? If I'm giving, that means I got some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to see you give and you don't have nothing. I, you, you, you know who was in the studio? You remember all that pizza we used to eat? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, guess who was buying it? I was buying it because the Lord was giving me a little windfall every now and then. And I, I was... And yeah, well, something may, may, I'm gonna have to buy some time. I said, no, I want to buy all the time because if I'm buying all the time, guess what? I didn't got a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, let's start this in Leviticus 27. And let's just read the book, you know, and, 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 and stop listening to these, these, these Facebook, these Facebook prophets and, 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 and these cheap olds. Because everything you get come by way of the Lord. You know, Leviticus, Leviticus 27. And let's pick it up at verse 30. Leviticus 27 and verse 30. Okay, go ahead. 
and all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Now who, now he let you know, so he said all the tithes of the land, whether it be seed of the land, whether it be money, mm -hmm. <laughs> or whether it be the fruit of the trees, it is the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord, not the Levi. Go ahead, verse 31. And if a man will at all redeem all of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. And concerning the tithes of the herd uh, or of the flock, even of whatever pass under the rod, the tenth part shall be holy unto the Lord. And he, he let you know if you 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 just got you got something to do, and you you said, well, shoot, I'm to, I need to use about thirty or forty dollars of this to get this in. Then he said, you got to add what? <laughs> he said, you got to add a fifth part. And he said, he that shall add unto the fifth part thereof. So if you use some of cause, see, you're supposed to take God's money right off the top. Yeah. You know, right off the top. He said, a tenth shall be holy unto the Lord, not the Levite. You know, shall be holy unto the Lord. Go ahead, verse 33. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. Also, he commanded the children of Israel to do this now, now, uh, this so this all this uh, uh, Jerome is under the old covenant, under the old covenant. But I'm I'm going to see when it when do it change. Uh, let's go into Numbers 18. Let's go right on into Numbers 18 and let's look at this thing. You know, you, you be tight with God. God gonna be tight with you. That's what you gonna eventually discover. You know. Uh, 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 let's go into Numbers, Numbers 18. Did I put the scripture on the screen? Did I add it up there last time? <laughs> I hate when I miss stuff. Sister Eleanor is not on her job. She's supposed to told me. Let's get them scriptures on the screen. <laughs> so, so let's, let's go to Numbers 18. Numbers 18 and pick it up at verse 1. Numbers 18 and verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with thee, that they may be joined unto thee and minister unto thee. But thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness, and they shall keep thy charge and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. Now, now why these guys here is really you bringing the tithe to them? Because somebody have to accept the tithe for the Lord. <laughs> you know, so the Levi. Uh, is the one that's over the, you know, the priesthood, you know, of, uh, uh, of, uh, because they had the one that had to do the sacrifice. In other words, and, and they lived out of the work that they was doing. Right, right. You know, that's all, that's all they was doing. Just like, a, like, it, it ain't nothing wrong with a preacher living out of the work that he do, except these preachers just go overboard. You know, it ain't never, nothing never been wrong with a preacher living out of the work, uh, out of the work that he do. For the Lord. Skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren the Levites from among the children of Israel. To you they are given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. You know, he then took them to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation for the whole, you know, for the whole land. Because they got to do this. And then somebody got to do it. And and they don't have time to plant a crop and uh 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 you know plant a field. So what do they do? They work in the tabernacle and and that's how they make. The, in other words, that's how they earn their living. Yeah. And uh 
Uh, skip down to verse 24 and go ahead. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore, I have said unto them among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. And, and the Lord, got no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up a heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithes. <laughs> Hey, he said, even, even they got to pay tithes on the money they get. You know, he said, you should offer it up a tenth part. That's what we was talking about in Kalamazoo. You know, the tenth is, 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 is what you should offer up, which I think is fair. You know, <laughs> God give you give you a, a, a hundred dollars and you got to give him ten. I don't think that I don't think that's too strenuous, mm -hmm. you know, you know, but because the Lord is fair. Let's go. Go right on into Deuteronomy in the twelfth chapter. Deuteronomy in the twelfth chapter, and, and let's let's deal, keep dealing with this thing. Let's go uh, uh, Deuteronomy twelve, and we are gonna pick it up at verse ten. Twelve and verse ten. Go ahead. But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when He giveth you rest from all your enemies round about so that ye dwell in safely. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring it all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifice, your tithes and the heave offering of your land and all your choice vows which ye vow to the Lord. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters, and your men servants and your maid servants and the Levites that is within your gates, for as much as he have no part nor inheritance with you. This guy he's certainly letting you know the Levi is the one when you get to get to uh, uh, if you want to do a uh, a a peace offering, the Levi got to do it. You know, if you want to give uh, any kind of offering, a uh, sacrifice unto the Lord, the, the priest had to do it. Yeah. He couldn't be, you come up there to do, you know, a, a peace offering to the Lord and the priest out in the field somewhere working. So, well, where is it? Oh, he way out there in the field. Now you got to go find him. No, Lord wanted him to be there. See, this is what these, this is what these old lazy preachers get that from today. The they, they got two members and they become a, 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 a full-time pastor sitting up at the church. Got two members. Well, I'm going to be sitting here, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and, and the people's go for it. I'm going, oh, wait a minute, you ain't got five members. You know, he going to quit his job and now the church trying to pay him, pay him out of, which is, is, is nothing wrong with him living out of the church. But then you, <laughs> I shouldn't have to work and struggle to give him a love offering because he don't have a six member, you know. And so, you know, you get your ten percent, uh, Pastor. That ain't enough. And, and then he, all the tithes went and don't supposed to go to the preacher. You know, and, uh, these Levites didn't keep the, all the tithes. They was they were really the system for the fathers and the and the, and the widows and and, the, and and they took care of those people with that with the tithes. You know, let's go into Deuteronomy in the twenty sixth chapter because people try to act like the Levites. Once God got rid of Levi, I, I'm gonna try to see where he got rid of him. Get, get where he got rid of him, he changed their work order. But he never did get rid of him. Deuteronomy the 26. And let's pick it up at the uh, verse 1. Deuteronomy 26. And let's pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. And it shall be, when thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possesseth it, and dwellest therein, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall put it in a basket, and shall go unto a place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And thou shalt go unto the priest that 
shall be in those days and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to us to for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thy hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. Now he gonna do it because whoever the priest wasn't there, who would you give, who would you give it to? You got to give it to somebody. God wasn't gonna come down come down from heaven just to get you get your little uh, little offering. So he set up a, a priesthood to take it, you know, to be there. Skip down to verse eight and go ahead. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he had brought us into this place and had given us this land, even a land that flowed with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which thou, O Lord, has given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee and unto thine house, thou and the Levites and the strangers that is among you. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and have given it unto the Levites the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat therein with, within thy gates and be filled. Then shalt thou say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hollow things out of mine house and also given them unto the Levites and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments, what thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandment, neither have I forgotten them. Now you see, see what he was saying now. See, that's what we was talking about right here. He said in that 12th verse, he's when thou made an end of tithing all the tithes of thy increase uh the third year. Because I I I I heard some guys out there, uh uh my brothers that that's that see a wearing fringes and, and wearing purple was telling me, Oh, you are you don't only supposed to tithe every three years. But we just read. We, we read that you bring your tithe in when the Lord bless you, when you have an increase. But this is this, this is a, a occasion right here uh, uh, that's it's so many different ways in there that you give tithe, you know. But either way it go, you're not giving it to the Levi, uh, but they don't want that's over it because they don't want to do the work of the temple, you know. You know, that's what they're doing. That's, that's why... You giving it to uh, uh, to the Levi, you see, but 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 nowadays the preacher is taking all the money, and and, and now everybody kicking against the tithe. But let's see what the see what the Bible says about the tithe because this is what it, all this is in the under the old covenant, as they say. But I'm trying to see wh what did he do in the new covenant? Let's, <laughs> did he change anything? Let, let's check it out. Let's go into Malachi because, you know, it, it was in the old covenant that he wrote that you're supposed to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. So when he when he made the new covenant, man, did, did he change anything? Mm -hmm. I don't. I always be wondering. You know, I hear people say all the time, "See under the the new covenant, he made the same covenant, just just." Just uh, 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 sitting him, sit him uh, 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 putting them all on the doorpost. Basically, what he was doing, the one part that uh, Israel broke was they didn't keep the covenant. So the Lord ain't never had to redo the covenant. I'm going to redo this here. I'm going to change this around because this wasn't right. Man, the Lord ain't never. His covenant has always been right. It was just the people that's supposed to have been keeping it. <laughs> wasn't keeping it right. Let's go into Malachi 3. And uh, uh, let's read what he's saying in Malachi here. Pick it up at verse uh, 6. Malachi 3 and verse 6. Go ahead. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now wait a minute. Now if he the Lord and he changed not, then that let me know when, when he, even when he made a new covenant, he didn't change. Mm -hmm. He just, you know, just like I'm, dig I'm digging a ditch with a shovel. Now I got a little backhaul. I haven't changed. I just changed the equipment that I use to deal with the same hole. That's all what God did. 
you know, uh, uh, go ahead with a uh, uh, verse, um, verse seven. Go ahead. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherewith shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. <laughs> now, how do, uh, what is he saying here? Is the Lord just bumping his gum here? He don't mean this. He said, will a man rob God? He said, yet have you robbed me? But ye said, when have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offering. In tithes and offering, you have robbed me. What does that have to do with the new covenant? Or the old covenant? You know, he is letting you know, you done robbed me in tithes and offering. He said, and ye, and ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. In other words, the whole land, even the whole nation of Israel. But when he's talking to Israel, he's talking to everybody out there. Go ahead, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now wherewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now you see what he said? <laughs> so all your tithes got to do with your blessing. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. He said, that there shall be meat in my house. Because Lord don't need nothing from you. Because he got, what he said, he own a, a, a thousand cows up on a thousand hills. So your tithe is really to help you. He said, and prove me. You And when you start tithing, you prove in the Lord. And now he will say to the Lord of hope, if I would not open you a window from of heaven and pour you out a blessing, yet there shall be room, wouldn't be a room enough to receive. Do you believe that? Amen. That if you tithe, the Lord going to open the window, but you, you hold that little money in your hand because you, you, you scared. See, this is what I tell you, brothers and sisters. If the preacher's wicked, then you are tithing from your heart. You're doing the right thing. Now, if the preacher or whoever you're giving it to, you, if you know he's not doing the right thing, then you shouldn't, you should, why should you, uh, 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 how did, how did it first go? Why should you get old, uh, 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 pay tithes for that which is not bread? Mm -hmm. Why should you spend your money if you ain't getting no bread for it? But if you see, like, like, like tithing at the Israel of God, you can see where your tithes is going. We got vans out there. We, we get no planes out there. We have feasts and you come down, you eat until your stomach get fat. And you ain't, you didn't, you, your tithes and offering is what bought all that food. So you see the results of it. We ain't riding around in plane. I don't get paid a penny. This show right here is making money. Uh, but I don't get it. Don't want it. You two pay, pay uh, they put commercials around this show and they make money off and then they send us a little of it. You know, but that is the blessing that you, you your tithe, like I, the title said, let me put that title up there again for you. you know, your tithes deal with your blessing. Because you tithe to God, you're not tithe to man. You tithe to to God for your blessing. You better believe that. So you better bring bring all you worried about the preacher. Hey, you give it to the you give it to the church. If 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 I'm the pastor, and I manipulate that money. He going to, God ain't gonna handle your blessing unless you know this guy's a crook and you stay tired. But if you don't see no error in in, in, in what they doing, and then you get your tired, and then make sure he's teaching you something. He's sitting up on there on Sunday. Yeah, you paying tithe, and he ain't giving. He giving you words to end, he put you in the lake of fire, and you don't even know it. You know, but you you worried about paying tithes. You better worry about that preacher that's preaching to you too. Let's go to proverb. Let's go into proverb. Uh, 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 proverb three. 
And let's see what the Lord think about a giver. Because the Lord said, prove him. Why don't you prove him? Prove him. See, don't he, he pour out a window. I always tell this story. Me and Mark, I told Mark during the during the pandemic, uh, 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 um, when we was when we was away from the class, uh, uh, Jerome, uh, my wife used to give me her tired money when she got her tired money. What I did, I put it in my saving account and paid her tithe and my tithes out of my checking account. Now you figure after I do that so long, some shit get unbalanced, shouldn't it? Mm. Because the money she giving me. I'm paying it out of my money and putting her money in a saving account. And guess what? <laughs> the, at the end of the month, everything was still even out just like I like I wasn't doing it. The Lord proved to me <laughs> that, hey, you pay your tithes, I got you covered. You know, but but we worried about, it, you know, when you know you sowing into a good seed, you sowing all, the, <clears throat> all these preachers, that's all they talk about, you know. Because that's all they're interested in, you know. But when you're interested in putting the word on the table, guess what, God? Yeah, before you know it, the Lord going to have them sowing seeds to you when you're putting his word on the table. Proverbs 3, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Now he said, he said, son, forget not my law. Because what are he gonna add to you? Uh, 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 length of days and long life and peace shall be added to thee. Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So you know, uh, since <laughs> Since since we don't know, my sister, let me let me let me let me. My sister, stop putting all this stuff out here. This is a distraction. It it, it don't take all that, my sister. Can you please kind of uh, uh, just me looking at it while I'm teaching? It is a distraction. So could you kind of chill a little bit? You know, you, you I don't mind you putting stuff out there, but this is not necessary. You know. So, because uh, uh, it's distracting me, <laughs> because I have to watch what's going on in the chat. Uh, uh, but look what he said in, in that verse. He said, under the Lord with thy substance. He said, and with thy first fruit of thy increase. He said, so shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and thy press shall be bursting out with new wine. Now, you know, you know you ain't got no farm. You ain't got no seeds to give. But what is the Lord blessing you with? With a job that pay you money that you can pay your bills and give God his 10% out of the blessing that he's given you. Because guess what? There's some people looking for jobs out here diligently and can't find a job. Yeah. But the Lord has bless you with a job. Then guess what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to give him, give him, give his money right off the top. So he said, in trust in the Lord, because your tithe is your blessing. That represents the blessing that the Lord is going to give you. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Let's go there and, 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 and just look at this and stop worrying about the little money you're giving God. Because he don't need it. He's really trying to help you. <laughs> you, know, you don't even know it. Let, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, nine, and, and let's pick it up at verse 7. Pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own ch charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith now the law the same also? For it is written, the law for it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes, for our sakes, no doubt this is written. 
that he that plows shall plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope shall be partakers of his hope. Now, in other words, he's, now he's, he's, he's letting you know he, uh, if a preacher is the one that's, he said, for it is written in the law of Moses. Why does he bring up that old law of Moses if that's been done away with? Why are you bringing that junk up? He said, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that thread the corn. He out there working, and you done put a big thing on his mouth where he can't nibble on the corn. And he the one doing the work. So that's the same thing what he's telling about the priest. They the one doing the work. Don't muzzle them. But you don't supposed to make them a millionaire. You know, you know, because the whole thing with them is about them. They all greedy dogs. And we ain't talking about them. We talking about uh, 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 the, the one that's doing the work of the Lord. You know, and, and he said, man, my church doing so much, man. He done build a nursing home. But he didn't build a nursing home for he can get some money. And he don't have to pay taxes on that nursing home. You know, but pay attention to what your church doing. <laughs> and, 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 uh, uh, and pay attention to what your preacher is doing. Because, you know, if, if, if your church is not a millionaire church, then why the pastor is a millionaire? Mm -hmm. You know, why he living like a king when the, when the members in the church is suffering? And I wonder, do these pastors pay their 10%? You know, of uh, they increase. Most of them don't, probably. I don't know for sure. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so have the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel shall live of the gospel. Now see, you see what he says? Those that preach the gospel should do what? Live of the gospel. So ain't nothing wrong with a preacher getting paid. You know, but Paul chose not to get paid. We at the Israel of God choose not to get paid. Don't even think about it. But you know what we worried about? Is getting fired from a job that we don't get paid. And you know, we are, you know, but because we are in this thing for salvation, that is the pay. That we looking for, but if we if if we got paid, we wouldn't be doing nothing wrong. You you know, but but they act like the preacher's supposed to just get in there and do everything, buy the chairs, pay for the air conditioning. No, that's what your tithe do, brother. And in the process of doing that, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you when you pay your tithes and offerings. Did you read that? Uh, okay, yeah, you read that for fourteen. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go into uh, Philippian. Let's go into Philippian 2. You know, I'm sorry, y'all. This ain't one of them jump up and down and holler lesson. <laughs> but you don't get too many of them anyway. <laughs> but but this is about uh, uh, something that can, uh, 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 to your blessing, can add to your benefit in you serving the Lord. You know, let's go to Philippians 4, and let's pick it up at verse 9. Philippians 4. And verse 9. Go ahead. These things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me have flourished again. Where ye were all so careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. In whatsoever state I am, there with to be content. You see what Paul said? I don't know. He said, I speak not in respect of want. He said, For I have learned, so whatsoever state I am, therewith I am content. He said, You know, whether you give or you don't give to me, I'm still content. Skip down to verse uh, uh, 13 and go ahead. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You can do all things through Christ that strengthen you, but you can't keep the commandment. He can't he, he can't strengthen you enough to keep the commandment. Ain't that something? You have me say that all the time. Oh, I can do all things through Christ and Jesus. But well, why don't you keep the commandment? All the commandments too hard. Why don't you resort back to that strength? Yeah. <laughs> you know, since you since you claim you you can do all things through Christ Jesus, but you can't keep the commandment. Sound like you 
Sound like you you just quoting, you don't want to live. You know, it sounds good when you say, man, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Why you can't keep the Sabbath? Since you can do all things. <laughs> you know, so next time somebody said that, say, well, hey, why y'all be why you be saying that the, the commandment is too hard to do? Just remember, you can do all things. You know, skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. Well, even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire the gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Now, who, like Paul said, yeah, yeah, you guys gave a donation, but it wasn't for me, but it's fruit that uh, desired to uh, be abound to your account. Account to who? Uh, when the Lord look at what you done gave, that's because he's going to buy to your account. And then now the Lord can bless you, bless your hand because you are a chill forgiver. He said, I, didn't, I don't need the money. Paul didn't need it. Because he, he had made it clear he can do all things through Christ Jesus. If y'all don't give, I can still do all things. But he said, but I, you, he, you died. He said, but I desire fruit that may be abound to your account, not mine's, yours. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what it's about when you pay your tithe. It's to your account, you know. So let's go into Hebrews 7. Let's see that. See what Jesus did to the priesthood, uh, uh, Jerome. Let's see that. See, because people say we're in the new covenant. He got rid of Levi. Let's see that he get rid of Levi. Let's just read the book and see what see what happened to Levi. Let's 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 just read the book. Let's go into Hebrews seven, and let's let's read the book. Uh, Hebrews seven and pick it up at verse one. Go ahead. With this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Now, who is this, who is this Melchizedek? You know, the king of righteousness. How many kings of righteousness can you have? Yes, and after that, the king of Salem and the king of peace. Brother and sister Melchizedek is, 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 is the, look what he said about this guy. Keep reading. Let's see, see that this guy fit the, fit, the, fit the Leviticus priesthood. Go ahead. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. So who now, is the Son of God? Who is the Son of God you think he's talking about? Jesus. <laughs> this is who this Melchizedek is. You know, he said, this guy don't have father. He don't have no mother. He don't even have no cousin. He don't have no descent. He said, having neither beginning of day nor end of the light. Do that fit a man? Mm -hmm. So you know this ain't no man. Go ahead with verse four. Go ahead. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Now he, he let you know, he, the Levi gave tithes to Abraham. You know, and they took tithes from among their brothers. You know, uh, 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 skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. And as I may say, so say, leave our also who received tithes paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection will were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. 
No, no, no. See, see, you, uh, Jerome, when people read this, when you read this verse 11, he said, if therefore perfection was by the Leviticus priesthood, for, un, for under it the people received the law. The law of what? Law of animal sacrifice. <laughs> you know, the, the law, you the law of animal sacrifice, what he's talking about here. Now, this is what ain't this what we're talking about? Okay. You know, he said, he said. And he said, for under the people received the law. He said, what further need was there that uh, another priesthood should rise after the order of Melchizedek? Because let's see, keep reading. Let's see what we're talking about. Go ahead. He said, for the priest being changed, that was made necessary, changed also in the law. What law is he talking about? The stuff that contained to the priesthood. The law that he's talking about. Not, not that. Uh, 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 he's still talking about what he, what he finna do to the priesthood. Let's just read. Keep reading. Verse thirteen. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood, and it is yet far more evident. For that after the similar two of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Now you see what he's dealing with. He said, for this, in that 15 verse, first of all, he said, read why you had to change the law, because only Levi could be in, pre, in, in, in the priesthood. So, but he said, so in other words, uh, uh, Technically, Moses is the high priest, but Aaron did the work of the high priest. You know, because you know why I know Moses was the high priest? Because that's, you know, he was the intercessor one that interceded for God, because Moses was a Levi too. But Aaron and his, his uh, sons, the one that did the work, but technically Aaron was the high priest. Mm -hmm. But Moses really was the high priest, you know. So now, what is he talking about changing it? The high priest. Into my change, so he's changing the high priest uh, because now he said, "I got to change the law. I got to change the law that that uh, 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 the high priest can come out of Judah." See, it's not mentioned in the law that the high priest could come out of Judah. But if we didn't get rid of the old covenant, why are we even discussing this? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, but 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 uh, he said he had to change the law that Jesus could be high priest because Jesus really would have to come out of Levi to be high priest. That's all he's saying here. You know, that's the, that's what he changed of the law. Uh, 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 read that verse 17. Go ahead. For he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now Jesus became a priest forever after order of Melchizedek. In other words, <laughs> because the sacrifice and animals couldn't do what it's supposed to do. No, the law of sacrifice. That's why you got the law of sacrifice under the priesthood. But the but the animals that were being killed could not take away sin. And plus, they couldn't bring eternal life. This guy is sitting on the right hand of the Father. That's why he said he brought so better promise. Because he he when, when Jesus became the high priest. All of a sudden, the priesthood, you can get eternal life from the sacrifice that he made. You know, but I didn't, did he get rid of the priesthood or did he just get a new high priest? That's all I'm seeing. Look like he's got a new high priest. Yeah. Let's go into, did we finish that? Yes. Let's go into First Peter then. Let's go into First Peter. Let's see if the priesthood is still around. Let's go into First Peter 2. And we're going to see it. Peter's still talking about a priesthood. What priesthood is this? 1 Peter 2, pick it up at verse 5. Because we, well, we don't have to pay tithes no more since he got rid of the Levitical priesthood. He didn't get rid of them. He just changed the high priest. Uh, 1 Peter 2, and pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. He also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices according to God by Jesus Christ. 
Therefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him should not be confounded. Is whoever believe now, now what priesthood is he talking about? He's talking about the, the holy priesthood. You know, because they still doing the work of what? The work of the Lord. You know, he said, uh, skip down, skip down to verse, verse nine and go ahead. Go read that verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, see, the only son when Jesus showed up and became the high priest, he just cut out all the killing of Adam. The priest still, when, when Jesus come back and gather Israel, what is he going to take us to be? Priest. And we the one going to go out and all over teaching this word. That's what the priests do. You know, teaching this word. But 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 uh, what Jesus just cut out, all that working on animal sacrifice. You know, I don't see where he got rid of the priesthood. So if that's why you say you don't pay tithe because he got rid of the priesthood, look like the priesthood is still here. You know, he has got rid of the label that the priesthood used to do. But you weren't giving your tithes to the to the priest. You was giving, he got his, 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 his ironing from doing the work in the priesthood. You know, let's go in the Haggai. Let's go in the Haggai, that little old book you got to find. <laughs> he in there somewhere. <laughs> I got to find him. I found him the other day when I was writing. It's real easy. And I got to flip and turn. I know where he is, though. He over here. Uh -oh. That's Habakkuk. We getting close. Okay, hey, 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 guy, hey, guy, one. Let's pick it up at verse two because I uh, keep telling you your ties uh, it, it deal with your blessing. Pick it up at verse two. Go ahead. Thus speak of the Lord of hosts, saying, "This people say the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built." Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, "Is it time for you, O ye?" to dwell in your sealed houses, this house and this house lie waste. Now therefore thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have so much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. <laughs> now you see what the Lord said see look what he's saying what he's saying here you want to live good it's time for you to go on a cruise man Lord blessing you to have money to go on cruise and you living good man it's time for me to live <laughs> but he said what about the Lord's house Yeah. what about that he said you have sown much and you, but you bring in little he said, you eat, but you have you ain't got enough. You drink and you're not, you still thirsty. He said, because you unwedge it with a with a and you put it in a bag that got a hole in it. And I done seen that, uh, Jerome. You be making a big bag. What, what in the world is going happening to my money? Because the Lord done blew on it. And and, and uh and, and everything you do, you know how that bag have a hole in it? Because soon as you get all that good money saved up, all of a sudden, your funnies go out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling the Lord know how to do it. He yeah. just, your funnies go out. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you get up, you're leaking around the foundation of your house. Yeah. He said, man, I just got this money. The car go down. Your car go down, Lord. Because you don't consider what you're doing to the Lord. You know, he's okay, go right ahead. It's, uh, go ahead, verse 7. Go ahead. That says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will glorify, and I will be glorified, said the Lord. 
You look for much and lo, it came to little. And when you brought in, brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man to his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed for dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon the which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the hands. <laughs> and see, that's how that bag out that old Because as soon as you get it, something go wrong. Yeah. And you be thinking, you singing Teddy Pendergrass, bad love. <laughs> Oh, you better take, take a look at yourself. The Lord is bringing all that bad luck, as you call it, because you ain't considered uh, the Lord is blessing you, and you just enjoying you. That's what, because the uh, only something you're concerned about is you. Uh, let's go into 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. I'm talking, brothers and sisters, your tithing is your blessing. If you don't want to tithe, Maybe you don't want no blessing. You know, you know, you stop worrying about it. If you give it to the preacher in all honesty or giving it to, really you ain't giving it to the preacher. He just the overseer of the money that you giving to God. That's right. That's all he is. Now what he do with it, that's between him and God. It won't hinder your blessing. You know, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead. Oh, I, or I only am Barnabas. No. Not we power to forbear. No, second, second Corinthians. Corinthians. I'm in first Corinthians. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians 9. Yes, sir. You did real good. Now I'm about to almost block you. Because <laughs> I ain't got nobody else to block. <laughs> go, go, go ahead. But this I say. Mm. He which soar sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soar bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You see what he said? When you do, when the Lord loves a cheer for giving, and you mad because I'm riding in a new car, but I gave my tithe when the Lord blessed me. And guess what the Lord did? He said, God is able to make all grace abound to, to you that ye always have the sufficient in all things. And that's not just in, in material things, that in physical thing, physical thing that, hey, you know, that the Lord is blessing you to be, uh, uh, your body is still good. And, and me, I can still ride a bicycle at my age, you know. Yeah. That is a blessing. Oh, now. Nah. You know, it ain't all, of, all the time about material things, but it's the physical thing that the Lord can do. And most of all is that peace of mind. Yeah. I don't think nothing can beat that. You know, let, let's go into Matthew, Matthew 6. Let's go into Matthew 6. Matthew 6, and let's look at this thing. Matthew 6, you worried about giving up a few pennies and the Lord just standing there with handful of blessing for your for your body, for your children, and for your your walk, this walk with Christ, you know. Uh, 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 Matthew 6 and 1, go ahead. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. He said, they going to have their reward. Don't be, hey, man, the Lord done bless me, man. I'm going to go around to the church, and, and I'm going to give $5,000. How many people do that? Because now you're blowing your trumpet, trying to let the world know how much, of, you know, you're giving the Lord to praise, but you're sure giving them the wrong way. You know, he said, uh, skip down to, uh, to verse uh, 
Now go ahead with verse 3, because he's going to tell you what to do. Go ahead. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. See, that's how he gonna reward you over. So you ain't got to be telling everybody, you know, you know, uh, 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 that you you done gave the church so much money, man. Uh, you know, just just go down there and give it and shut up. <laughs> and then what the Lord gonna do? He said the Lord gonna reward you openly. You know, you don't have to tell people that the Lord is blessing you. They can see it. <laughs> you know, they can see it. You don't have to be telling telling nobody. Yeah. You know. Let's go into Genesis 4. Let's go to Genesis 4. I'm talking, the Lord, that's what the, the Lord always give to you, and he expects you to give back to him. Not grudging. Even these brothers here had to come up with some, with, with some tithes and offer. Genesis 4, pick it up at verse 1 and go ahead. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. And bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to, and to his offering. The Lord had respect unto Abel's offering, but Cain, what did Cain do? Go ahead. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance failed. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. <laughs> and you see what he said? When you don't do well, who lie at your door? Sin. <laughs> you know, when you don't do well, sin lay right at the door for you to clown. And what did Cain do? He clowned. He? Go ahead, verse 8. <laughs> and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Now, the Lord just told them, said, look, man, if you do well, but when you do, when you don't do well, then who's at it? Who lies at his door? Sin. <laughs> and before we know it, he didn't commit a, a, a major sin. Not only <laughs> he committed murder, but he didn't show no love to his brother. So, you know, and kill him because sin lied, lied at your door. Let's go into Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. And we're going to read two verses. Uh, verse 22. Verse 22. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 22. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 2 and 14, 14 and 22. 14 and 22. Yes, sir. Okay. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy field, I'm sorry, of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat there of the Lord thy, before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithes of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thy oil, and the first things of thy herbs and of thy flocks, that thou mayst learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Oh, oh so what do, now you, you got these crazy people out here acting like they don't know, uh, 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 when they when the, when the people kept the Sabbath back in this time, they 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 settled up a mule, or got in a wagon. But what now? Now when you keep the Sabbath these days, what do you get in? You get in your car. Mm -hmm. But why you think you still supposed to bring corn and, and stuff? You done, you done went from a horse and a donkey and a wagon to a car, but you still you still got these. Uh, Israelites, I just well, see, you're supposed to tie corn and, and wine. and you know, Go to the store and try to buy some of some corn. Because the Lord is blessing you with a job. Your, your 
your increase is, is cash money. And that's what you bring to the Lord. And you, you see right here, it's not every three years. He said, bring, he said, I shall surely tie all the increase that I see that from the field from year to year. Not no every three years, it's year to year. You know, but you ain't got no corn. You ain't got no uh, cow. So what do you, what do you have? If you can't figure out that you got money, that is your blessing. How did you buy your house? With money. So why you want to bring corn to the church? You gonna get Caesar money, but you gonna give God corn. Hmm. Man, man, I'm talking, we don't even think, man. Sometimes when I hear somebody talking that stupid, I just, man, I just going, come on, man. Come on. You can't be that dense. You just cheat. And you're trying to think of every way not to get the Lord his his dude. You ain't got to do it. And he's gonna blow on that little money you got. Yeah. And, and I bet you'll be looking for some corn in the can. <laughs> you know, because you're gonna be yeah. so home. <laughs> you know. Let's go to Deuteronomy 16. Flip right over to Deuteronomy 16. And this is talking about doing the feast day. Uh, uh pick it up at verse 16. Go ahead. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he have given thee. Now what are you giving according to you are able in the blessing? If you ain't got no blessing, don't give nothing. Maybe you'll find out why you don't have no blessing because you didn't get nothing, you know. Because let, uh, 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 let's go, let's go into Acts, uh, 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 Acts the, the fifth chapter. We gonna we had to get out of this lesson. It's a nice hot day out there. I had to go work on my tan. Uh, Acts, Acts the fifth chapter, and look at this guy. The Lord then blessed him to have all his property, and he made a vow. And you know a lot about. A lot of people do this uh, wrong. Yeah. When they get a little, they might get a little lawsuit on their job and they come tell the preacher, uh, when I get this money, man, I'm going to give a, I'm going to give about two, about $6,000 to the church. And you get that money and start spending and you looking at it and say, man, this money going fast. Yeah. I still haven't gave the church that $6,000. And you done made a vow. Yeah. Because the Lord didn't ask you to do that. You yeah. did it yourself. Now look what this guy did. Everybody was everybody was give, given to the church. I wonder why they was given to the church. Since that's that's Levi. You know, why Peter and them taking up the money? And this should be Levi. Because Le, but the priesthood is still Peter and them. The apostles then. But still the priesthood ain't went nowhere, brother. He just changed the high priest. <laughs> you know, Acts, <coughs> Acts 5. And let's pick it up at verse one. Go ahead. But a certain name, a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Was it remaineth? Was not thine? Was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, go ahead, go ahead. And the young man arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. Now, he he done died. He done, well, when he's with you, as I'm coming in, yeah, yeah, he's going to stop that fire. You just yeah. read. <laughs> uh, 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 look, at, look, look, look at that or not. Now, he done sold some land and kept back part of the price. And his wife also went along with this guy. And then when he got there, man, uh, that angel revealed to Peter, say, hey, he holding back some of that money. Yeah. 
And then Peter said, and I'm not. Why have, why have Satan filled thy heart to lie to the holy angel and to keep back part of the price of the land? Because, you know, uh, agree. That's why, you know, and all of a sudden he ended up dead. But uh, let's see what happened to the wife. Let's see the, see the, see, see the God omit the wife. Pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead. And Peter answered unto him, her, tell me. What verse you 7. Pick it up at 7. Okay. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her. Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah, for so much. Now she she down at Mason, down there buying all kind of stuff, just getting stuff. Ooh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. We didn't sold this land because what they was doing, uh, everybody was putting everything in, in, in a pile and they was distributing for one nobody uh, uh, be uh, poor. Uh, well, not poor, but everybody had something. And they going to try to double dip. Put in not all what they have, but they gonna keep back, and then they gonna split the pot. Yeah. And she down there in Mason don't know her husband; they done buried him. And then when Peter said, "Hey, hey, 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 uh, hey girl, how much y'all sell that property for?" Yeah, yeah, we sold it for that. And look what Peter said to her. Go ahead, verse that. Mm. Then Peter said unto her, "How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord?" Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, found her dead, and carried her forth, and buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon the many as heard these things. <laughs> I bet it wasn't nobody holding back that tie then. Somebody said, wait, oh, oh, wait a minute. I, I got some money in my shoe. I better get that out. <laughs> they, they, they was going, they was finding money everywhere. Let me go home and check my couch. I got some money. <laughs> Once the Lord dropped that fear, man, they, everybody probably said, whoa. <laughs> so would the Lord kill you about that? Yeah. Let's go and read. Uh, but but I want to pay attention. In, in verse 3, he said, you lying to the Holy Ghost. And then in, in, in verse 9, he said, why did you tempt the spirit? Because the, the, the Holy Ghost is merely an angel, brothers and sisters. But, but we don't believe the Lord to do that. The Lord he took them right out. But let's go into Ecclesiastes. Let me show you why he, he took, the, uh, took the took husband and wife out. So since both of y'all want to lie, both of y'all going to be laying right beside each other in the grave. Let's go into Ecclesiastes 5. Let's look at this. <laughs> Let's look at this. Look at look look what happened to this lion couple. Five, and we're gonna pick it up at verse four. Ecclesiastes five and verse four. Is I'm, no, is I'm right. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Wrong. Is it five and four? Oh, I'm in Isaiah. <laughs> I'm getting worse than, worse than somebody reading for me. Uh, uh, five and verse four. Ecclesiastes five and verse four. Go ahead. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. Yes. For he when have vow no vows of God, defer not to pay it. What's going to happen? For he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands. <laughs> now you see who, who they were really lying to. They were lying to that angel. Because <laughs> he said, he said, in other words, don't, don't, let your, don't let your mouth write a check <laughs> that you ain't able to cash. He said, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. He said, neither said before the angel. Oh, well, I, I was going to get that $6,000. And then, you know, man, some stuff. 
Hey, Lord ain't going. That's the same thing when we talking about a vow in marriage. Yeah. Don't suffer. Don't get that vow in marriage because you're making a vow that you're going to stay in this marriage forever. Yeah. You know, you should tell the preacher, look, preacher, when you when when you when you read my wedding vow, do you promise to love this woman forever? So don't say ever, just say until until you get tired or something. You know, because, because once you make that vow for forever, the Lord going with forever. And he said, but look what he called him. Look what he called uh, 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 Ananias. He said, when thou vows a vow unto God, defers not to pay it, for he have no pleasure in food. See, Ananias was a fool. Because the Lord don't make you bow no bow. You know, it was your money. You ain't got to just give what you want to give when you get there. Don't be so overzealous. Man, I'm getting $100,000, man. I'm going to get a church $10,000. And then, then you decide to pay off your house. And now all you got is $12,000 left. And you, man, if I get a church 10, they ain't going to leave me with $2,000. But you didn't have to buy that vow. Yeah. Let's go to the last place. You know, Lord, you know, but because your time is for your blessing. Let's go to Romans the eighth chapter. And this is the last place, and we're gonna get on out of here and enjoy this beautiful day. Romans 8, pick it up at verse 31. Romans 8 and 31. Go ahead. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us. Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? See, the Lord give this Lord give us all things. Why we, why we can't trust in the Lord? You know, don't worry about what the preacher doing with the money. You ain't giving it to the preacher. I know when I give my tithes and offer, I ain't giving it to the preacher, but I know the preacher's. At the church is the overseer of the money. I'm giving it to the Lord. And I ain't looking for the preacher to bless me. I'm looking for the Lord to bless me if he will. So, brother and sister, you know, the tithe you give should be to God for your blessing. That, that everything be well with you. You know, that's what you got to do. You know, and, and I didn't. That, that So when the next time somebody told me, well, God got rid of the priesthood, we shouldn't have to pay tithe. I'm part of the priesthood. Jerome, ain't you part of the priesthood? Yes, Did they get rid of us yet? No. <laughs> well, keep <laughs> dropping them tithes. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I hope you got some understanding out of, the, out of the word of God and understand that your tithes deal with your blessing. If you're always catching hell, maybe you should look in them. Look and see why you holding that money so tight, but check the bottom of your bag. It might have a hole in it. A hole that you can't see because it's a spiritual hole. And I want some you know that money's gone. You know. So, brothers and sisters, I hope you got some understanding out of this lesson uh, uh this morning. We do appreciate you guys hanging out with the I mean with, with Jerome and myself on the coffee and bible hour. Uh, now I want you guys to go out and enjoy your day. If you got to go to work, go to work with a big old smile on your face and tell somebody about this great God that we serve, that he is truly a great job. And tell them even that gold tooth that you got in your mouth, it come by way of the Lord. Let me stop meddling. <laughs> you know? Jerome, you got a thing to say before we get out of here. Yeah, excellent lesson, brother. And uh, I pray that everybody be blessed and that you keep the Lord before you in Jesus' yes, sir. name. I, I truly know that is the right thing to do. If you keep the Lord before you, then everything will be all right. So you know I need you guys. Like I say, you go out now and enjoy your, this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Enjoy it. Be blessed in this day and just and show love to your brothers and sisters. And the Lord will show love to you by giving you the desires of your heart. You know, and, and I know for sure, I'm not guessing this ain't what somebody told me. If you if you be if you be right about the Lord, the Lord will be right about you. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, 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 Jerome. I know that's for sure. Take it to the bank. I'm not guessing about that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, he even did. He even did it for me too many times. So I just thank God 
for the blessing that he instilled upon me. I thank God for you guys tuning in, getting some understanding in the word of God. Hope this lesson was edif edified, edified to you and know that you giving your tithes have nothing to do with the Leviticus priesthood. Your tithes is to God. And even the Leviticus priesthood, they they had to get tithes. And I wonder who does they get the tithes to since they were the one collecting tithes. Call, hey, Leroy, come over here and get my, my tithes. He, he Leviticus. Well, come get mine. They give it to each other. <laughs> <laughs> because it ain't about giving it, giving it to each other, brothers and sisters. It's about you giving it to God. You know, you know, you know, and um, and that's what it's about. And God will bless you. I know for sure He will bless you. Hey, here's some clown then come in late. He's a tied system was under the law. We are not under the law. See, see, that's what I'm talking about, Jerome. What is he talking about? Sir, <laughs> what is I wish I could talk to you because you don't know, you don't have a clue. What law are you not under? We just read that he changed uh uh, uh the high priest. Ain't that's all we read, uh Jerome? Oh yeah. Now, brother, I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna do you a real big favor. I'm gonna block you. Have a good day. He gone. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not dealing with you. He, he just popped in at the end of the show. He right. gonna talk to me, you know. And I ain't dealing with that. You know, go somewhere where they ain't got, where you ain't got no law. Because what law did he? Well, Tyler was under the law. We still under the law of, of God. Yes, See, because you know why they so blind? Because somebody told them that Tide got something. That Moses, the one, came up with the law. Moses ain't got no law. It's the same guy that gave the law to Moses is the same one that's sitting on the right hand of the Father. So what law are you talking about? So I did you a favor. I won't put, put you, give you the stress to listen to this program. I put you in time out. You know. So brother and sister. Y'all go out and enjoy your day, and people like this guy don't even listen to him because we read the book. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, 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 Jerome, I hope people don't think I'm being cold blooded, but we read the book. You know, you gonna come in? See, that's what I'm talking about. He gonna come in and put his his opinion on the table. Where is he getting it from? Titan was under the law. Keeping the commandment was under the law. So do we have to keep the commandments anymore? Hey, loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength is under the law. Under the law. What are you talking about? But well, why is I'm talking about him? He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all have a good day. Y'all y'all go out and enjoy enjoy your day. Uh, 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 and, uh, uh, let's see. See, uh, I'm trying to, I, I, the brother just came in at the end of the show. I thought I blocked <laughs> My name is Jack. I am a man. And if you're talking to the body of Christ, it is open open to the body of Christ and his members. If not, excuse myself. I love Jesus. Amen. Well, well what are you talking about? You, If you love him so much, my brother, learn about him. You know, instead of, instead of coming on to a program, I must miss blocking this guy. Usually when I block you, all your comments disappear. You know, but I'll let him stay up there until the end of the show. Yeah, learn and, you know, listen to the whole lesson. It'll, be, right. it'll edify you and expose you to some verses that you might Because, you know, he just come in. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the time that this brother came in. He came in at 7.56, 7.55. 7 let me see can, I, see, can I find him before the end? He's not there. You're not there. He come in at 7.55 and, and, and come in talking crazy. This is what I'm talking about. If you want to go to the lake of fire, listen to these brothers like this. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. He come in at 7.55, ain't listen to the whole lesson. You know. And, uh, 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 the lesson started at 6.35. 6.35. <laughs> and you gonna come in and and, and 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 you know more about the lesson than stuff that you talking about we already made clear. See, brothers and sisters, that's why you have to watch you who you listen to. 
you know. But uh, y'all take care, enjoy your day, and we'll be back for another great episode. Because see what y'all didn't see in there, he really insulted me. If you if you represent Christ, who you think I'm representing? You know. But he didn't insult me because he gone, as they say at the White Sox game, when they knock a home run. You didn't heard that before, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I ain't gonna even be worried with that. I got I got too much joy in me to let somebody come on that don't want to learn, but want to come on and teach. You want to teach, get to your podcast. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, but brothers and sisters, y'all take care. Go out and enjoy this beautiful day that the Lord have made. And we will be back tomorrow for another great episode in the word of God. You know, we'll be here if the Lord is willing. And if the creek don't rise, Jerome, we're going to be here. Y'all take care now and be blessed all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.